had this channel since 2010 and often it feels like, oh Louise, you have been on YouTube forever, this is your whole life. Yes, it is now, but shock and awe to all of you, I've had jobs prior to this and I thought it might be fun to talk about my career before YouTube and I'm using the word career very, very loosely here <laughs> because um, as you'll see, I, I wasn't on like a strict career path. Oh, a little message from my dad there. Um, so, but I thought it'd be quite interesting. I love it when people do these videos. I come from a family of entrepreneurs. My dad um, owns his own businesses, which he started when I was really little, like when I was about three. He had a wedding photography business, and then he built that up into business to business marketing and now has like his own empire. And my mum, before she died, she ran a craft business where she would make her own craft things and sell them at craft fairs, but also she would organize the craft fairs. So she would hire like, the village hall or the stately home and then she would charge people a fee to have their stalls there and she would do all the marketing for it. So I've grown up seeing people be their own boss and I really like that. So um, my first little gig that I had <laughs> was when I was six and I would sell broken glass to children in the playground which is terrible. Um, I don't know why my parents didn't think, where are all our glasses going? But I would get our glasses, like our um, drinking glasses, and I would take them outside in the garden and smash them. And then with my foot, with a shoe on, I would crush all the glass down until it was like tiny like little diamonds. And then I would put them in a little Tupperware pot in my pocket. And then I would take it to school and I would sell the diamonds to the, to the other children um, for one coin. Sadly though, um, my business got busted by Miss Bailey. Business got busted by Miss Bailey because obviously children are going home with broken glass in their pockets and um, it's pretty dangerous. Then I continued my childhood without setting up any more um, injury inducing businesses. And when I was a teenager, when I was about 14, 15, I would always ask my dad for pocket money. And my dad, and dad, I'm not sorry if you're watching this, I'm outing you. My dad is a massive tight ass. He ran his own business empire and we lived in this very affluent area and we were very, like, doing very well. But would my dad give me any pocket money? No, no, he would not. That's a lie. He did. He gave me one pound a week when I was 14. So that's four pounds a month, five on a good month. And I was like, brilliant. Thank you, dad. That'll cover absolutely nothing. Thanks very much. Um, so I quickly realised if I wanted to have any money to buy busted CDs, oh man, I absolutely love buying busted CDs, um, or to get the bus to see my friends, or to go to Claire's accessories and McDonald's and the stuff you want to do at that age, I'd have to earn it. So I set up a genius plan because I was absolutely obsessed with the books, The Babysitter's Club, and also they did a TV show that was like, say hello, say hello to the people who care, Babysitter's Club. Just this thing that I'm waving around, by the way, my friend Emma, Brummy Mummy of Two, thinks this is a penis. I'd just like to point out, this is not a penis, it is a seahorse, thank you. Um, right, so I decided that I would be the Collingtree Park babysitter. I lived in this really nice area called Collingtree Park, you might be familiar if you're in Northampton, sadly I don't live there anymore because that was like, so, it was like desperate housewife, that wisteria lane, it was gorgeous. And I went on my dad's computer and I made flyers with word art, so in that blue font that was like, some comment below if you know what I mean. I put the Collingtree Park babysitter and I put all my like what I consider to be credentials like have own transport but really it was like my bike that I would cycle to people's houses and I put them all through the doors and eventually I started getting calls and I had a special little diary where I'd write down my appointments um, and I got well known in the area because like mums would talk to other mums and I started having like four or five babysitting um, appointments a week so and I was earning about 30 pounds a night so I was doing all right, I was earning probably, well, more than any of my friends were at 15, and I absolutely loved it, and I thought that was a great job, but I wanted something during the day, so when I turned 16, I applied for a job at Morrison's, which is um, a supermarket, like a grocery store, um, and I worked in the refrigerated section, which I absolutely hated, because I had to put all the ham out, and if you know, oh, you know, I can't, I'm pregnant, I can't talk about ham too much, I hate it, it makes me feel very funny, um, but it was my job to put that out, and the coleslaw, and the butter, and the cheese, basically I just stacked the fridge shelves, just all day, every day, it was my absolute dream to work on the tills, but they would never let me work on the tills, that's all I wanted, was to sit on the boop, 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 cheer, help with the packing, 
boop but they wouldn't I wasn't good enough for that so uh, I just did stop replenishment um, and I did that for about six months and then I realized that I was spending a lot of my like very very few wages on the bus fare because I had to get two buses there and two buses back so as well as being the Coventry Park babysitter I got a job in a chemist at the top of my road um, and I was just on the till there living my dreams on the till a boop boop would you like a bag with that um it was a bit awkward because i was 16 and i felt really funny about when people would buy like condoms or tampons where i'd be like <laughs> here's the condoms <laughs> and once my crush my biggest crush ever came into the shop and he bought some cough medicine it was um, a brand called cavonia and there was an advert on the time that had a jingle and i just lost my mind and he put it on the table and i went cavonia cough medicine with clout and he was just like yeah <laughs> thank you and I was like okay would you like a bag <laughs> uh, needless to say we never got together um I'm happily married now with someone else and that's absolutely fine okay what was my next job okay so after that I went to university when I came back from university in the holidays I would continue to be the Coventry Park babysitter which I enjoyed but whilst I was at university I got a job in Subway um, as a sandwich artist is what I was called at the time basically I just was the person that like stood behind the like screen and I was like what bread would you like <laughs> would you like salad with that would you like meat with that and I quite liked that job because we got to take sandwiches home for free but the things I didn't like about that job is when we had to clean out the tuna the tuna thing and it had all the tuna juice in Ugh. and again I had to touch ham a lot I did actually ask I was like um could I be excused from making anything with ham and they said no so I didn't last there for very long and I left there um and continued to tell my dad that I worked there so dad if you're watching I'm sorry I did not I did not work at Subway for three years I worked there for about six months <laughs> and then left and I'm sorry and um, Cran gave me some money and I didn't tell you that Cran gave me some money to help me with uni. Okay, moving on. When I left, oh, whilst at uni, I had a few little jobs. Like once I did um, a catering thing at Aintree Football Club and I served Neil Buchanan, the one that does Art Attack, and that was very exciting for me. Um, I did like bits and bobs like that. Sometimes I did events and things, but I didn't have like a solid job. Um, then I left university with my degree in psychology and biology and I was like, here we go, I'm gonna get a top job. Well, that's not how it works, kids. You don't leave university and walk into an incredible job unless you have been savvy and you've been interning or you've applied for a graduate scheme or something like that, which I had not because I had spent my uni days snogging boys and drinking snake bites, which was not a good use of my time, although I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, so I joined a recruitment company called Forest Recruitment. I don't even know if it still exists. Um, it was a little bit strange. They didn't have computers. They did everything by hand, which they said was their like selling point. Looking back, I don't know what if it was just they didn't want to buy computers, but it was weird to be in an office in like 2006 that had one computer, but there we are. Um, and they sent me off on a few temp jobs just doing admin and then I went to work in their office doing reception because their receptionist left um, and I liked her and there was also a girl called Lucy who I liked and my boss Liz was quite nice but everybody else I didn't like um, they were always talking about diets and stuff that I wasn't interested in and once they made me go on a diet even though I didn't really want to um, which I think is a little bit not right. <laughs> um, but they um, then put me in a placement. So it was a temp agency. They're like, oh, do you want to go to this? And it was working at the police, Merseyside Police, doing admin. And I quite liked that. That was good. I just did audio typing. Um, although that was the worst paid job I've ever had in my life. So I went back to the temp agency and said, could I have something else, please? And they put me back in their offices, which I didn't really like. Um, and then I left there completely, I was just like, this is not really working, I think I'm going to leave, but thanks ever so much. And um, another recruitment agency called Jobwise, which is where my friend Lucy from Forest had gone to, put me in a job in a pensions 
company that was actually in the Liver building. If you know Liverpool, you will know that big building, it's iconic. I really liked it there, I liked my team. Um, my ex-husband worked there as well, when we were together at the time, but it was quite nice because we could walk in together and I stayed there for about a year. And whilst I was there, because I thought, right, this is a limited amount of money I can make it. Like it's not on commission or anything like that. It's just gonna be what I'm earning in my pay packet. Just like, I was literally just processing pension things. I can't even really remember, but I just did a lot of like things on the computer and took calls, that sort of thing, this. Mm. I um, applied to be an Avon lady, you know, ding dong, Avon calling. Um, so they said that I could be an Avon lady and I was ace at Avon sales. I would just go around so many houses. Like my area was absolutely massive because I lived in the city centre, but in the city centre of Liverpool there's lots of little pockets of like housing estates. So I would just wander around all of those knocking on the doors being like, hello, would you like some Avon? And like fair play to Avon. Um, I made quite a lot of money on it. The products were really good. They like treated all their like um, sales reps well and I quite liked that. Um, and then after a time, I basically got sacked from the pensions company. They said they didn't need me anymore, um, but then they did hire someone else to fill my exact same position. So I think I was sacked. And I think the reason for that is I spent all of my time on forums about Avon to find out how I could like increase my sales as an Avon lady and like learning about strategies for Avon and stuff. So um, the pensions company basically sacked me and I did Avon for a bit and then I got another job and this was my best ever job at a company called Morgan Ashurst and me and my friend Emma have a jingle for it. Morgan Ashurst, not Emma that thinks this is a penis. I have another friend called Emma who's just had a baby. Congratulations, you shouldn't, you're not watching, you're dealing with your baby. Um, and that was a construction company and I was the receptionist and my duties were answer the phone, answer the door, open the post, that was it. Um, and I really liked it. There was like um, a guy called Mike and a guy called Frank and my boss, Barry, Barry Roberts, if you're watching, because I know you watch some of my stuff, you were the best boss I like, ever bloody had. Um, it's just a great atmosphere and I think it's because um, it was a lot of men and I know there'll be comments about this but I think if you put a lot of women in an environment together it can get bitchy um, and it, because there weren't a lot of women in the office there were like five or six of us it was mo mostly men it was just I thought it was a good environment um, so I really really enjoyed that but whilst I was there old Barry if you're watching, very sorry. I spent a lot of my time on the internet researching blogging and I was like, I could do that. I might set up a little blog. Um, so I just carried on reading all the blogs, much to probably like, I had a line manager called Alison and she probably knew that I was like skiving quite a bit and like not doing all of my job. Although, you know, it was literally only answer phone, answer door, open post. Once I'd done that, job's done. Um, and Eventually, I stayed there for about a year and then, oh, and I negotiated a pay rise with Barry and I was like, thanks Barry, thanks Baz. I was thrilled about that. Um, then I moved down to Northampton and um, my ex-husband and I bought a house and it was my job to, um, I stayed off work for about six months to renovate the house and like oversee all of that. And then I had to go back to work. By this time, I'd started my blog and my YouTube channel, but I really thought that this was just gonna be um, like a hobby, I had no idea you could make any money from this. This was back in the day before it was people's jobs, before people talked about it, before people knew. And I was like, I just really enjoy doing this for like the shits and giggles of it. So I got a job at Northampton Borough Council and um, it, no, 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 before Northampton Borough Council, I got a job for another recruitment agency. So I went into the recruitment agency to be like, hey, I've done a lot of temping, can I do that again? They're like, do you wanna work here? And I was like, all right. So I was the PA to a lady called Emily, and I really liked that. She was really nice, um, she was quite firm, but she was fair. <laughs> if you're watching Emily, hello, she's moved to Australia now. Um, and, but then she left, and you know, if your person that you're being a PA to, personally assisting, leaves, what are you doing? So I stayed there for a bit longer, sort of just doing odd jobs, but then didn't really work out, because I was like, oh, there's nothing for me to do, and they were like, mm, yeah. Um, and at that point I realised I was pregnant with Darcy and I was like, oh god, I now don't have a job, I'm pregnant, what am I going to do? So I attempt at Northampton Borough Council, um, <laughs> where I seem to remember 
all I did for the three months that I was there was scan things. So I'd take bits of paper out, scan it, put it in, scan it, out, paper out, scan it, put it in, paper out, scan it, put it in. That's all I did. I just did the most basic of admin. Um, and I had a boss who I'll call Sarah, who was potentially the dimmest woman I've ever had manage me. Um, she said a lot, she had a lot of good one-liners and I would listen to them and be like, oh dear. And you could see everyone else in the office was like, oh, what are you saying? Once we had a temp come in and he said, oh, I've got to go, got to go because I've got to pick up my daughters. And she was like, oh, how old are your daughters? And he went, five and seven. She went, oh, twins. And <laughs> we were like, um, <laughs> no, no, Sarah, not twins. Also, once she said to me, could you open the window, please? If I don't get enough oxygen, I feel like I might die. And I was like, yes respiration that's all of us um she didn't notice me at all ever she called me the wrong name almost every day once i fainted at work at about seven months pregnant and i was on the floor and she didn't notice <laughs> i came round and i was like i've i've fainted she was like have you and i was like i think so <laughs> it was really awkward um so obviously then i left to have darcy and um, I was on like state maternity pay, so I had a little bit of income coming in um, and that's when I started thinking, right, I've got to go back to work part-time at some point. And I worked out how much money I would make if I went back to work part-time but also had to pay for childcare for that part-time time. Um, and by then I was starting to make a little bit of money on my blog um, and that's when I was like, right, well maybe I'll just try and make this a thing. And here we are, seven, eight years later, and it has become a thing and it's done all right. But up until now, um, my work experience has been lots of admin things, lots of dealing with people in offices and like having to try and work with people that you might not necessarily want to be friends with outside of work. Um, lots of like customer interaction and then also there's little things that I did myself which were Avon and the Coningtree Park babysitter. Um, honestly, if this all goes kaput, I'm going back to being in the Collingshire Park babysitter because that was a good gig. I would just sit and watch TV and eat other people's snacks and get paid for it. So, um, have I missed anything off my list? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, I hope that you enjoyed that. I would be really interested to know what has been your best job and why and what has been your worst job and why. Um, my best one was Morgan Ashurst and my worst one um was potentially the recruitment company straight after i left uni um yeah there we go if you find this sort of thing interesting let me know because i could happily make more things about this um and part of me wants to talk about how i made this my like business my gig um because but then i'm not sure if it's like a bit dickheady to talk about this in like such a brutal like financial way um i'm not really sure what the etiquette is so i don't know let me know what you think i hope you enjoyed this and i'll be back um on friday for another video maybe baby related maybe not i will let you know probably baby related okay thanks for watching bye